Okay, I've already taken this uh, Radio Shack remote apart. Uh, I want to show you how to install the membrane keypad and put it back together. Uh, this is the Radio Shack 15-1994 Universal Remote. It's kind of popular, uh, but the buttons, um, they're just painted on um, conductive black pads, and that's the worst kind, so uh, the buttons fail. Now this, uh, this is the membrane keypad, and what it is is a very thin keypad that goes between the rubber keypad and the circuit board. And then it takes over button function and also blocks out any dirt and oil in the future. And this should never wear out. I've already installed it uh, just recently, but you can peel it back off again if, if, you know, if it doesn't line up or if you need to change anything. Or, or maybe there's a contaminant, like a little piece of plastic in there you need to, to get out that you didn't see. But before you install this, make sure the circuit board's nice and clean with rubbing alcohol. I like to use isopropyl 90%. You can get away with 70, but it, that has more water in it. Make sure it's dry. Um, the membrane keypad has a brown paper liner, and sometimes it can be hard. You pick out a corner. Actually, it's better to start at the back of this one on the bottom. You pick out a corner, and then you can peel the paper off. The paper will come off, once you get it started, it'll come off very easily. Um, if you do have difficulty, this is multiple layers of plastic. If it's coming apart difficult, you probably split the plastic and you're not peeling the paper off, you're splitting the plastic in half. So you make sure as soon as you get it started, it comes off super easy no matter how old it is. Um, so uh, you take the paper off, and the best way to line this up is to line, is to put it down like this, and to line those two circles up like that. And then on this end, there's three holes and three holes in the circuit board. And you kind of get those as close as you can. So I'm going to line up those two big circles and just make sure that those look like the little circles at the other end are going to line up. And then I'm just going to let go. And that's all you have to do. It won't come off. You don't have to, you want this to be nice and flat so you don't want to be pushing on it. So. At that point, it's going to stay on for assembly. Now, this has a originally had this clear film that was on the circuit board um, protecting, I guess, the circuits from the backlight. But this is taking over this function, so you don't need this anymore. Um, the backlight goes on top of the circuit board. Actually, I'm going to go the other way. It's going to go that way. But I'm going to install it over here instead. Actually, before I do that, I want to show you these two screw holes down here, which use the, um, there's two screws with kind of a fatter head on them. And that's part of the backlight. And what that does is make sure those two spots touch the circuit board in those two areas. Now, this remote had cracked. Um, the screw posts were cracked. You can see I put a little bit of modeling glue on there and let it dry for a while. This one was cracked too. You might want to look at it over a little bit. Also, not a big deal. This, this had a crack in it. I just put a little modeling glue on that and let it dry. So if this is really dirty or nasty, you can wash it in the sink with warm water or soap. Let it dry off, shake it off. Um, just put that back down in there. Make sure none of the buttons are kind of stuck at, at an angle or anything like that. Um, then we want this to go down so the on top of the rubber keypad so you can see the black and not the, um, I guess, white or maybe reddish color pink. So we got the black with the white outlines. Okay, and then the um, membrane's on there. And just flip this over like that. Okay, so now we got to put in the wide head screws. And, uh, you, you know, you don't want these loose, but you don't want to necessarily over-tighten them and break those delicate screw posts. So I would, I would hand-tighten it and not use a power tool. Just kind of snug it up. And then there's four screws, two for the back, and then there's two up here at the top. Okay, 
now we got this, uh, this, this is, uh, lets the infrared light through. Little shield, so it only goes in one way. So I'm putting it in the bottom housing. Fits nicely. And then I got the key pad in there, and that's screwed in so I can flip that over without stuff falling out. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. Now, I had already taken this apart, but just to show you, um, for taking these apart, you take the two screws out, and then I take a small flat screwdriver, and we're not prying. I'm putting it in sideways like that and just sliding it, and it'll unsnap the snaps like that. So you just you use it as a wedge and slide it along there, and that pops those out, so that's pretty easy. Okay, so then the membrane's installed. I got two screws here. Um, I think is that it? Okay. And then I'm going to just slap some batteries in here. This particular remote already had like tin foil stuck to all the buttons I had to remove. Um, okay, so now you can see that red light comes on when I push the buttons. Yep. And all the buttons should work great. If, um, if a, a button is shorted out, like one of these is held down, um, usually it, it, would, it would act like that. Maybe the, the light would be stuck on. Or... If it's not, like, say, maybe a button that's that's currently deactivated is stuck down, like right now the stop button doesn't work because of the mode it's in, um, then no buttons will work. No buttons work. I mean, you might have a button stuck down or there might be a battery problem. Um, oh, yeah, when you do put it back in, make sure to pay attention. Those springs... Uh, You know, the springs, there's two of them on the board, and two of them are in the back plastic housing. So the ones on the board, you need to make sure they slide up into the slots. It, it just did it without me even paying attention. So, but um, make sure, you know, because if they are bent down or whatever, it's not, obviously it's not going to work. Um, yeah, so if a button is stuck down, it'll probably be on solid red. Um, and that could be this wasn't laid down flat, it was warped or bent or... There's a piece of plastic that was rattling around that's now stuck in there, holding it down. Um, so you could take it apart. Within the first day, the membrane keypad comes off pretty easy. Um, if you have any difficulty, you might want to heat it up with a hairdryer first. But I've already peeled that one off a couple times and put it back. Um, uh, after a couple days, the adhesive strengthens and it's more, of a, more difficult to get off. So you want to make sure all the buttons are working once you got it you know, set up. And if there's any issue, you want to take care of it right away. But that's it. Thanks for watching.